Hey there, everybody. It's Lynette Chandler from Thrive Anywhere. Today, I'm going to show you how to use fonts with glyphs and swashes in PowerPoint on the Mac. Now, if you are a PC user, we will have a separate video for that because the process is similar but different at the same time. So we are focusing here on a Mac. As you see here, I have our name brand in a very nice font. And this font that I'm using is called Always Having Fun. So sometimes when you are shopping for fonts and you look at fonts the way that they are displayed, they look so beautiful. And you buy it, you download it, and then you use it. So let's take, for example, here, I'm going to change this font from the Calibri, which is what's installed as default in PowerPoint into the font Always Having Fun, which is what I used up top here. But take a look at that. Wait a minute. Why is it so different? There's a lot of things different. First of all, the H's are different. The W is different. The Y is definitely different. And then we have this little thing here, which looks like an icon, but it's not. So when you buy fonts, you use it, and you wonder why your fonts don't look like how you bought them, you know something is missing, but you don't quite know what. Well, chances are it's the glyphs and the swashes that are included in the font, but when you type it out, it's not automatically used. You actually have to do extra work to get it there. And these are usually called uh, font alternates, and sometimes we refer to them as glyphs and swashes. So how do you do that? So you have a built-in app in your Mac that manages all your fonts. That's called a font book. And you can simply go to your applications and open it, or you can do a command space and do a spot like search for font book app and you will find it there. I have this already open here, and I have gone ahead and scrolled to the Always Having Fun font. And when I click on it, actually, it doesn't really matter whether I click on the regular or not. When I click on it and I scroll through here, I was just going to show up a little lower as I keep scrolling after I'm done with all the louts and all that stuff. There we go. Here, it's starting. Okay, so the E I have here is different. This is a, a flatter E. This one is one that hooks up higher. Then let's see. We have a T, a lowercase T that's different as well. There is the H. Let's, let me move this aside. In some fonts like this, you may have multiple different types of Okay, let me move this smaller so we can see here a little bit better. Okay, so the H, all right, even this H is different than this H. It has a slightly nicer, more flourished hook on the top. So I have a lot of different alternates like this one. There's another Y here that is not as fancy as this Y that I've used, but it's nicer than this Y as well. So how do I access these right here? Well, very simply, it's copy and paste. So what I have to do is let's start with the H. Let's find the H that I've used up here because I really like that huge flourish. Now, I could use this one too. Let's try this, that one out. Now, you may be viewing it this way, but we want to make sure that we click to switch to repertoire or preview mode. You click on it, and we just simply do command copy because we're on a Mac. And then we head back to PowerPoint, and I'm going to command V, which is paste. Now you will find that it gives this little question mark icon here and a little paste icon, options icon below. We, we click on that and we click keep source formatting. 
and you see it's changed. So now I simply delete that and delete that H. And I'm taking a look at it. Um, that's okay. You know, that's not too bad. I might keep it. In fact, let's keep it. And since I have two H's, I would just do it at the same time. I repeat the process. Delete and delete the spacing. Okay, next thing I want to do is with the Y, same thing. I go back to my font book and pull it up, and I already see it right there. I really like the Y. In this one, the Y is going this way. In this one, the Y is going the other way. Since this one, I have all the swatches going to the right, let's do one all the swatches going to the left. We do the Y with the swatch going to the left. And I'm going to paste it here. Do keep source formatting. Delete the old Y. Oops, sorry. Evidently, it didn't paste proper, copy properly. So back to font boat. Click on that command copy, command V to paste, keep source formatting. There we go. Okay. And so we have it there. And then I have the W. I kind of like the W being like wide and, and really funky like that. So let's look for the W here. Oh, I'm all the way to the bottom. So that's not there. Sometimes it may take you a little bit. Okay, here's a different kind of Y. Do I really want that one? We can try it and see how that looks. We click on that W, Command Copy, and Command Paste. I have it. Keep source formatting. I'm going to delete that. Um. No, it kind of looks a little weird like that, I think. So let's go back and find the other W. All right. After some searching, I found it, and it is right there. We click it, Command-C. Back over here, Command-V. Keep source formatting. Delete the old W and move it back up here. And then as for the glyph here at the end, that's really something fun that you want that I added, and that's not necessary. But this font, some fonts have it, some fonts don't. Is graphical elements like this. So instead of this uh, clover, three leaf clover, maybe I might want something different. Maybe some hearts, and I'll just click paste. Keep source formatting. Whoops, I forgot to command C. Click command C, command V. Keep source formatting, and there it is. Now, the nice thing about it is these can change in size along with the font. So, for example, if I make it large, 80. And you see how much larger it is now. It will change according to the font and behave a lot like the font itself. I hope that this tutorial has given you some ideas and finally showed you how to unlock the potential of all the fonts that you have invested and bought and paid money for.